Oh no, it's that wall again. What's he going to go on about this time? Well, I thought I'd just talk briefly about my videos and uh, the filming of them and a little bit about you know, background about them, really, and how they came about. And it all started, actually, with uh, the camera that I used being bought for me as a present. And um, I discovered that not only would it take pictures, but it could actually make quite, vi quite good videos that could go up to um, 29 minutes at a time. And you can make several of them. You'd have to chop and change batteries and things and start and stop the camera. But I thought, I'll have a little bit of fun with this and um, see if I can film a motorbike ride. And the first time I did it, was a threaded fitting underneath the camera. You can screw um, a bolt into or whatever, and I actually screwed it onto a handlebar mirror stem on my Triumph Tiger Cub and rode up the road, and the result was terrible. You could hardly see what was going on. But I worked on it, and eventually I actually made a video about how I make my videos, and I stood in front of a mirror, and I might, what I'll do, I think I've long lost the original copy of that uh, film, so I couldn't edit it into this one, but I can provide a link in my little write-up about the video, I'll provide a link to it because it is actually on YouTube somewhere and uh, you'll see the equipment that I've got when I go out and ride the motorbikes and how I film my videos and uh, what I film them with. But you're going to get people that have a little bit of a whinge about, oh, you know, your camera angle was not great and oh, the sound wasn't fantastic. And a lot of comments come about um, engine noise on the bikes and uh, people saying sometimes uncom uncomplimentary things about how they sound. Um, for instance, the other day someone said that a bike that sounds great in real life sounded like a bag of nails. We're going to hear a train in a minute. That's another thing people ask about this railway station. I won't pick the camera up and show the train because you're not going to see much of it, but he'll probably blow his horn in a minute and drown me out. Um, so the line is live, obviously. Uh, where was I? Yeah, uh, sound quality and um, engine noise. And a lot of the engines on the bikes that I ride and work on actually do sound, shall we say, rougher on video than they do in real life. Um, but I'm not ashamed to put it out there. I can't make them sound any better than they do in the videos. Um, they are what they are, but trust me that they do actually work and sound, or sound a lot better in real life than video but one of the things that the camera can do actually which is uh, a good flip side of that is that if an engine's pinking even to a slight degree that you can't pick up by the naked ear there we go that'll be the train look both ways if you're driving across one good thing is pinking things like that noises like that sometimes you may think that an engine, or I may think that an engine is not actually doing it while I'm riding the bike. Um, but I can come back, replay a video I've just recorded, and I'll actually hear faint pink. It's never anything much, obviously, because uh, you can hear when an engine's pinking heavily. Um, but sometimes it can just sort of say, well, I'll just rich in the mixture up a little bit, or perhaps knock a degree or so off the ignition timing, whatever. But um, it's good from that point of view because you can hear things via the camera and the video that you don't actually hear in real life. So uh, yes, the engines do sound a bit rougher on video than they do in real life. But you always get somebody trying to tell you, well, you know, why don't you do this? Your sound quality is terrible. Have you tried that? Well, I haven't got Channel 4 or the Discovery Channel following me around. What I've got is a little camera held around my waist with a slice of inner tube wrapped around it and some cable ties and a bungee cord and um, that's why sometimes depending on uh, what sort of handlebars and seat arrangement the bikes have got it's difficult to get a good angle and I can't see what the camera sees until after I've done my ride and come back and upload the video and have a look but I can generally sort of grasp that the camera wants to be sort of pointed at such and such an angle and hopefully we'll get a reasonable video. Sometimes I have to stuff things down my jacket to give myself an even larger belly than I've got so that if I'm riding something with clip-ons or low handlebars my sort of mock belly on top of, I'm not saying I haven't got a belly, but uh, build it up and the camera tilts up more so that by the time I lean forward hopefully the camera looks straight ahead. 
I've had cameras looking at the top of fuel tanks, I've had it sometimes looking up at the sky, but I've, I got wise to that early on. Put that right. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is uh, these videos started as a bit of fun and just out of my own curiosity really to see what they'd come out like. And then I thought, well I'm working on these bikes, people are paying me to fix their bikes. Some of them live quite far from me, quite a few hours away. Um, I've even done things uh, that have involved posting stuff into Europe and so on. But it's sort of handy, say when you've got someone up in Scotland who owns a pre-war, so AJS for example, I did one in 1929 it was, but I had to fully rebuild the engine and got it going. And I was able to ride the bike contact the guy and say here's a video of your bike do you think you're going to be happy with it have I missed anything do you want me to do anything else etc best thing I can do with these videos of course is to put them onto YouTube then I can email a link but of course I could make them all private on YouTube but then of course I can't share the links with anybody so I've got to make them public so then anyone can see them most people enjoy them um, I guess there's some people don't, they're not everybody's cup of tea, but then I'm not forcing anyone to watch them either. Um, so I don't really see the point in, um, I know the sound is crap at times, and I know that sometimes the camera angle goes a bit skew with, and the camera can actually, as it did in one recent video, if it gets a bit of a knock, it's stuck got something in it for some reason it vibrates I think it's to remind you that it's switched on actually when you're not using it more than anything and then the picture goes really blurry but I try and keep all these things in because if it's a crucial point of a project for instance when I'm trying to start something for the first time if it takes me 15 kicks before the thing fires that's what you see in the video I don't edit it down to three uh, we don't live in a perfect rosy tinted world where everything goes right and uh, I'm so clever that everything works perfectly first time and I want to share that with everybody so sometimes you might have to sit and wait 15 minutes before you hear an engine start when I do a start attempt but if you do that's what it was like for me obviously I mean if it takes me hours well fair enough then uh, you know I will uh, cut corners a little bit where the filming's concerned but usually what you see is as it happens in real life and um, no tricks and I just really like to keep it that way because it's real occasionally I slip up and perhaps swear a little oh that's naughty um, but if I do something made me do that in the moment and I'm sharing that moment with you as well so um, I'm just gonna carry on filming the way I do um, if it's not to everybody's liking, I'm very sorry for those that uh, think that I ought to do better. Or you could send me I don't know, hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of stuff or tip a camera crew off that I'm here and uh, perhaps they can come round and do the filming for me. But I'm quite happy with the way things are really and uh, I think it's down to earth. It tells it the way it is and... Um, Okay, I tend to use the same old routes when I test the bikes and a good reason for that is I never actually go very far from home because if something breaks down, say a bike, some of them are worth quite a lot of money. Now I don't want to be leaving anything at the side of the road and I'll probably push it home. I've pushed bikes seven miles before now, so I'd rather push them seven miles than 70. I've got some nice scenery close to home as well and um, I think can get a bit uh, tedious perhaps to see the same scenery all the time but it's nice scenery and it's usually on a different bike or I might do the same run on the same bike after I've done some work on it to compare how it goes after the work to how it managed with that route before. There's always a reason for it um, and one day perhaps when I'm old and knackered and can't ride anymore if that day ever comes I might have all these videos to look back on and uh, watch while I'm sat there in my bath chair or whatever. Um, hopefully it'd be nice to be fairly able-bodied until the day I fall off the perch and I hope that's a long time away but you never know so it'd be nice for me to even look back on these and perhaps my children and maybe grandchildren if I ever have them and anyone else just 
it's a little sort of window into something that I did um, that I enjoyed and I just decided that I'd like to share it with people as well as the owners of all these fantastic bikes and I really enjoy what I'm doing. I don't really see that I need to get myself a funny hat or some tattoos or I don't know dive into a harbour or whatever whatever else that these you know you get these things happening I've seen it on the telly you know they've all got their trademark quirks or clutch a little cuddly dog or something it's just me the bikes and the spanners and occasionally you might see a cat or we might get chased by a dog and um, I for one want to say long may it continue and I hope everyone else or most of my viewers enjoy what I do because um, if you enjoy it I've enjoyed it if it makes one person happy other than myself I think it's been worth doing.